Their highest priority after Jesus is to help and encourage Austin in his responsibility to lead. I see that potential in you too, and I'm encouraged by that. The final reason why I believe this passage is still relevant today is to becoming one flesh is a process that requires an ongoing investment of time, energy, and your commitment. Both of you guys have great examples in viewing the marriages of your moms and dads. They've done an excellent job as parents, but they've also done an excellent job in their marriages. But both of them would tell you very clearly that they, didn't, they do not have what they have by simply not investing time. It took time, energy, and communication. Moses saw the absence of the husband from the marriage in the fir formative first year, and I would use these words with all seriousness as detrimental and even destructive to the marriage. Simply being married does not ensure that you will both grow, grow closer in your relationship. Even being present in your marriage will not ensure you will grow. This is a greater vision than simply sitting on the couch and watching the television together. And there's a lot of people that just simply do that. It will require an intentional use of your time to invest in the life of the other. It will require giving your best energy, which is going to be tough, but you guys can do it. Which will require eliminating some unnecessary stuff in your life according to your values so that you can have energy for one another. And it will mean acting according to your commitment to love one another, not according to how you feel. You probably know this, but how you feel right now in this moment is not always how you're going to feel every day in your married lives. However, you can make a choice and a decision to make this a priority. And with God's help and God's grace, you can invest to accomplish that. The longevity of love and health of a marriage depend mightily on the strength of your commitment. People don't fall out of love. I hate it when they say that. They simply begin to choose over time to stop loving. Austin and Renette, I want to encourage you to purpose to make year one great. Make Jesus your priority individually and as a couple. Seek his help as you establish good habits and patterns that will enable you to develop and grow closer to him to one another. I'm going to be praying for a great first year for you guys. So you want to get married? Well, let me pray for you. <laughs> awesome. It's like, yeah, I want it in my ear. <laughs> let me pray for you first. Heavenly Father, thank you. And we are so aware that you are in control of every aspect of our lives. Even if there are those here tonight who do not believe that, do not profess it, it doesn't make it not true. Father, we thank you for how you work in our hearts and lives. I thank you for the way that you have brought these two together. And Heavenly Father, even now I would pray that as they begin by like, exchanging their vows now, that they would begin to develop the discipline and the habits and the patterns that would foster not only a close relationship together, but more importantly with you, Jesus. So we ask you to bless this time and this evening. And may you be glorified, Father, in Jesus' name. So I'm going to ask you now at this time, if it is your desire to enter into the Christian covenant of marriage, if it is, I'm going to ask you to reply by saying, I do. Austin, will you take Renette to be your wife, to live with her, respect her, and love her as God intends, with the promise of faithfulness and tenderness and prosperity and in adversity as long as you both shall live? If this is your desire, please say, I do. I do. Renette. Will you take Austin to be your husband, to live with him, respect him, and submit to him as God intends, with the promise of faithfulness and tenderness and prosperity, and in adversity, as long as you both shall live? If this is your heart's desire, please say, I do. Since it is your intent to enter into this marriage covenant, please face one another at this time. I'll let you pass off your book and do something. Go ahead, you guys can. Hold hands because you're almost married, that's okay. <laughs> and I'm going to have you exchange your vows. And Austin, I'll have you go first. Please repeat after me the following. I, Austin, take you, Renette, I Austin, take you, Renette to, be my wife. to be my wife. I promise before God and these witnesses to be your loving and faithful husband. 
in plenty and in want, in, plenty and in, joy, and in, sorrow, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health as long as we both shall live. Renette, excuse me, please repeat after me the following. I, Renette, take you often to be my husband. I promise before God and these witnesses to be your loving and faithful wife in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall live. You two have chosen to exchange rings, so I'm going to ask Lex to hand me the rings. By the way, the ring bearer was so jubilant because he was literally carrying the real rings, and we were concerned he might run off with them. So go ahead, guys, and grab the ring you'll give. There you go. Nice job. The wedding ring is a symbol of marriage in at least two ways. The purity of gold symbolizes the purity of your love for each other, and the unending circle symbolizes the unending vows you are today taking, which may be broken honorably in the sight of God only by death. So as a token of your vows, you will give and receive the ring. So Austin, go ahead and place the ring on Renette's finger, and then repeat after me. I give you this ring, I give you this ring as a symbol of our vows, as a symbol of our vows with, all that I am, with all that I am, and all that I have, and all that I, have I honor you, I honor you with, with this ring I thee wed. This went ring, I need what? Good. Renette, go ahead and place the ring on Austin's finger and repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of our vows. And with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I need to read it. With these emblems of purity and endless devotion, you wed, and by these marriage vows, you here and now forever seal. Let's go ahead now and sign the license. over them, and I pray your protection over them as well. 
Lord, as they begin this new adventure, not only as a married couple, but even in their careers, I pray that you would help them to find their hearts close to you and then also close to one another. So bless them even now. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Inasmuch then as you, Austin, and you, Renette, have consented in holy matrimony and have witnessed before God and these friends, by virtue of the authority vested in me as a minister of the Word of God and by the laws of the state, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put us under. Austin, you may now kiss your breath. So let me introduce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Austin and Renette Swanson. Thank you. 